Hello, let's talk about top Lorcana decks. Hot off the heels of Gen Con and with the retail release looming, Lorcana deck lists have already seen quite a bit of action as players play digitally on Tabletop Simulator or the fantastic community-built client Pixelborn. So let's get right to it and show off what I think are the best five decks you should be playing as the meta for Lorcana's first set begins to emerge. First up, we have a Ruby Sapphire Ramp Removal deck, essentially a control deck with two very focused goals, early game ramp into oppressive board control through removal and strong characters. The key cards in this deck include the bread and butter Sapphire Ramp combos of Grandma Tala and Detective Mickey. These are vital as an inkwell engine allowing you to play high cost cards as soon as possible. After the Sapphire Ramp kicks in, you'll focus on board control with removal cards like Dragon Maleficent, Hades, Dragonfire, and Be Prepared. This deck is a monster in the late game, with an ink color combo that grants access to many of Lorcana's most powerful cards. Here's a look at the full deck list. You'll notice a few more late game lore units, like Floodborne Aladdin, who can attack into units and swing the total lore difference by four, often by surprise through a shift. Bell is another late game option, questing for five lore if your inkwell gets to 10, which is fairly often when fighting a control tug of war. Shield of Virtue and Let It Go add additional board control to the deck and are both inkable as needed. This deck can run out of steam, and to combat that weakness, be sure to run Develop Your Brain to help you find the right cards at the right time, such as speeding up your ramp in the early game. Also, Robin Hood is an underrated card that can help with card draw plus offer a defense against elusive characters. Meanwhile, Aurora Dreaming Guardian provides ward to your other characters, which is great versus other ruby decks or steel decks that focus on action removal, and you will run into this constantly. Finally, although this deck is good, it struggles versus hyper aggro decks, which are extremely popular, so I love adding the two cost fill with three strength. As a great tech card that can take out Bodyguard Simba, Cheshire Cat, Cruella, Hans, and other aggro threats. This deck performs best with a hard mulligan for a Detective Mickey play on turn three, but if you suspect you'll be up against an aggro deck, you can also opt to keep a fill or Maui to help you shut it down as you ramp up. Here are a few other options this deck can run. If you're struggling against Emerald decks running Cusco, you can run a couple of Gastons that can take him out with one hit while only costing two ink. There are a couple of great five cost options to consider, such as the incredibly efficient 363 Maleficent, or even Donald Duck, which although he has half the willpower, he does come with Ward protecting you from removal. If you want other options for late game quest threats, you can try out Stitch Abomination or Mickey BLT. And finally, if you'd like to speed up your Sapphire ramp, you can play One Jump Ahead or Fishbone Quill, but with the current deck list sitting at 16 uninkables, I prefer to leave these out. Overall, a lot of these options are great, but I find this deck the most successful with simplicity and speed. Technically, this is a late game control deck, but the playstyle feels like an aggro deck with an aggressive ramp needed to outpace your opponent. Up next, this deck is sort of a miracle style Amber Amethyst deck. I call it Doc Rock because the core of this deck revolves around Dr. Facilier and Rockstar Stitch. If you like the idea of having 10 characters on the field and having 12 cards in your hand, this deck is for you. Like I said, the key cards in this deck are Floodborne Stitch and Facilier. Stitch lets you draw when summoning low cost characters and Facilier ensures they return to your hand when banished in a challenge, which means you can trade into enemies much more liberally. This also means naturally that low cost characters are a go-to choice for this deck. This deck list runs Lilo, Maleficent, Pascal, Simba, and others, making this deck very lore aggressive. Toss in Jafar, Keeper of Secrets, and you get even more juicy synergy with your hand size. This is definitely a slept on card. If you haven't had a chance to try it out, this is one of the best decks to use it in. Here's a look at the full deck list showing off more one and two drops like Stitch and Charlatan Facilier, our two shift targets. Meanwhile, this deck's three drops may not proc off Stitch, but they are vital to keep the deck rolling properly. Maleficent provides card draw while Rafiki is a fantastic rush attacker versus aggro decks and can be deadly in the late game paired with Facilier bouncing him back into your hand. At a glance, Elsa is an unusual addition, but her ability to exhaust enemy characters for your one and two drop minions to sprint at can't be overstated. And against aggro decks, Hey Hey can help you trade up with other characters in the first few rounds, while Befuddle is great for disrupting early enemy turns. Finally, I like to run two lanterns. They're super efficient in this deck Dropping them early means you almost always have a zero cost character that can be dropped for free to extend big combos. I don't have a ton of tech options for this deck list, but one thing to consider is the removal of a few uninkables. With Lantern, Rafiki, and the two lore one drops, they stack up quickly. Because of this, I'm hesitant to run a few more uninkables, but Freeze can be a fun choice similar to Elsa. 
Another consideration is Rapunzel, which is a fantastic card used in almost every Amber deck as a card draw option. But this particular deck doesn't really have draw struggles, utilizing Stitch and Facilier for card advantage. But you will see Rapunzel later in this video on lists where she has more bulky characters to heal up more easily. This is a super fun deck list, perfect for anyone who loves playing combo decks. And I have to imagine it can only grow stronger in the future when new one and two cost characters are added to the game. Next up, if you've played Lorcana at all in the last month, you probably could have guessed a top five list would be full of aggro decks. This next list is an amber steel deck I'm calling Steel Song Aggro. This is similar to the previous deck's amber line, but less combo dependent and more straightforward. This deck focuses on the aggressive questing cards in amber, like Lilo and Bodyguard Stitch, and combines it with early game defensive cards like Duelist Hook and Smash. This combo allows you to rush lore yourself while also controlling the push of rival aggro decks. A few turns in, you can either continue your aggro push or settle into a mid-game lockdown with cards like Giant Tink, Rapunzel, and Ariel who can sing songs like Grab Your Sword and A Whole New World, hence the deck's name. These two songs are very powerful, but be careful with A Whole New World as it can help out your opponent depending on the matchup and the flow of the game. Looking at the full deck list, Hades is worth mentioning as a great tool for returning a character to your hand. This is essentially a card draw ability and allows you to grab back a Tinkerbell or other valuable character. I also run two beasts in this deck as a tech card versus a lot of strong items in the meta. This is best used versus control decks who set up Magic Mirror or Eye of the Fates, both very strong items that if left unchecked can help swing the game back in their favor. For other card options, my list here doesn't include Fire the Cannons, I much prefer running Smash. For one extra ink cost, it knocks out three willpower characters, which is a vital number for removing a lot of meta threats. Smash is also inkable, which is something I really value when building a deck that needs to stay consistent. If you want more early game quest units, I've seen a few players run Aladdin Cornered Swordsman, but his low willpower is susceptible to Giant Tink and other cards. You may be better off running Galactic Hero Lilo for the same ink cost. She's a sleeper pick that can trade up into Cusco, Mad Hatter, and other threats. Finally, if you dislike the chances of a whole new world helping out your opponent, you could swap those cards out for Beast Mirror, which seems to be pretty popular in similar deck lists, but I find it a bit underwhelming to be honest. Overall, this is a really fun deck, and I think players are starting to realize that Steel can combo together with almost any color and do pretty well. Coming up, these top two decks are incredibly strong, and the first one is certainly the most rage-inducing, the Amber Emerald Aggro deck. This deck list is a well-oiled machine that wins games in five turns if left unchecked, and tends to outpace control decks and other similar aggro lists. As you might expect, similar to other Amber-based aggro decks, you're looking for an early Lilo plus Simba combo, followed up by other great questing characters. These include other Amber cards like Rapunzel or Rockstar Stitch for card draw that you can shift in on turn four. But ideally, you won't even need that many card draw tools. Stitch can instead be a deadly questing tool, shifting in on turn four and questing for two extra lore on a dime. Simba is also the perfect candidate for singing Be Our Guest since he already wants to exhaust on most turns. Ideally, Be Our Guest acts as a free scout and draw on turn three, often used to find some strong early game Emerald cards that this ink combo provides, such as Flynn Rider and Cheshire Cat. Both of these quest for two, but are also disruptive with abilities that deter offensive pressure. Emerald also provides the strongest lore-based mid-game available with the incredibly strong Cusco and Mad Hatter, whose abilities both deal out even more benefits when coming under fire. Finally, this deck runs Tinkerbell and Genie on the job, they add more pressure with evasive, demanding response from opponents as they both quest for two lore and will often stick on the board for multiple turns. Genie also acts as a quick bounce back on an enemy character, which can be vital during a neck and neck lore race. The power of evasive alone often catches players off guard, and this deck has been able to win mirror matches against skilled players with these cards, including the rank one Pixelborn player. And here is the full deck list, which is intentionally kept lean and focused. The goal is to get every tool you need in every game. Ideally, this deck can push for lethal around turn five or six, which is vital for avoiding control decks that will inevitably clear your board and lock you down from any progression. Lethal that early may seem difficult, but it's frighteningly consistent with a decent hand, and if the opponent doesn't respond or can't respond. As mentioned, Cusco, Hatter, and even Hans are where Emerald shines. 
These cards that can quest for three will be a constant threat that opponents must respond to. Otherwise, it only takes a few turns to threaten victory. Maximus is also a staple in this deck, adding to the bodyguard pressure of Simba, while also using support to give strength to other characters in case trading for board control becomes your best option. This deck list is streamlined for success, but if you do want options, there are plenty of ways to bolster this deck to deal with various threats. If you want a stronger mid game, try Just In Time, Beast, Lantern, or Hades. If you find yourself in a lot of late games, cards like You Have Forgotten Me, Mother Gothel, John Silver, or even Prince Philip can help you fight back. I would consider all of these cards tech options into specific matchups, as I think they don't perform quite as well as the main deck list does. But as the meta shifts, I could see many of these cards becoming a stronger staple in Amber Emerald aggro decks. If you like quick games, going face, and playing hyper aggressive, this is the deck for you. And finally, we have my number one deck, and easily my favorite on the list. This is an Amethyst Ruby control deck that has the ability to react to almost any situation. The core concept of this deck is that it combines powerful Amethyst cards for draw and disruption with Ruby's lethal removal and late game characters. This combo leads to an unmatched level of control over the game that I haven't seen in other ink color combos. For the early game, a package of Olaf, Vasilie, Gaston, and Rafiki help to trade into aggro threats while you curve up into stronger units. Later, this deck provides the beautiful combo of Elsa plus Aladdin, which can easily catch opponents off guard, especially when paired with supporting cards like Pocket Watch. After getting your inkwell to 7, this deck is pretty unmatched, it defeats most aggro decks unless they manage to put up a ton of lore before this. I've seen so many aggro decks rush up to 17, 18, even 19 lore, but they can't face the pressure from Be Prepared, Elsa, Maleficent, and even Magic Mirror, which is probably the most underrated card in the entire deck. If this card was inkable, I would run 4 in every Amethyst deck. Because of Magic Mirror, this deck stays strong indefinitely versus other control decks that will quickly run out of resources and be forced to top deck. This deck list has an interesting combo of cards that took testing and tweaking to get just right. With lots of card draw, removal, and disruptive options, this is a satisfying deck with a high skill ceiling. For early and mid game threats, Jafar sticks to the board as a great defensive character, while Maui works as a true MVP of the deck often functioning as a two-for-one use of Dragonfire that's still inkable. With five strength, he can take out Dragon, Stitch, Tinkerbell, and Aladdin. Of course, Dragonfire is still extremely useful in its own right, with its ability to hit non-exhausted characters of any size. Another overlooked card is Pocket Watch, which can be a game saver and is fantastic with Aladdin, Elsa, and Maleficent. This deck also features four copies of Befuddle, which is an underutilized card that you can use loosely to push back early Lilos, Captain Hooks, Simbas, and more, stalling out the early turns until you fully come online. This deck's biggest threat are hyper aggro decks like our last list. But this deck is able to beat top Pixelborn players running aggro decks if played properly. A common strategy is controlling the early board while stalling for a well-timed Be Prepared or Spirit of Winter Elsa. Understanding how to play that early game and launching it into the late game is vital, and many other similar lists seem to ignore the importance of this. This deck does have a lot of options, and your choices will change depending on the meta. Instead of Shield of Virtue, you could run Fan the Flames or LeFou as alternatives, but I find that the reusable effect from Shield of Virtue adds more flexibility and responsiveness to this deck's late game, and it combos great with this deck's strong characters. Some great mid-game options to consider are Stitch, Pongo, and especially the Queen, which just barely doesn't make the cut in my list. But it is one of the best Amethyst cards, and it would be an instant staple during a slower meta. Finally, if you want another late game threat, BLT Mickey is incredibly strong in this deck. He doesn't offer the same game saving defense that Maleficent or Elsa offer, but he brings incredible questing power to the table. I think the main elephant in the room is that this deck is number one on my list, while its weakest matchup is the number two deck, the Amber Emerald Aggro deck. But in a matchup, if you can swing control over from their aggressive board presence, it's game over. And honestly, with so many card options in these colors and a high skill ceiling, I think this deck has a higher potential in the hands of a great player. I can see this deck evolving and becoming even stronger as more players give it a try. So for now, I'm happy crowning this deck list as number one. But hey, maybe you know something even better. And let's be honest, this list could be very different in a couple weeks as the meta continues to form. So if you've stuck around this long, make sure to like this video and drop a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on all these deck lists. 
I'll also leave links in the description to each of these decks on Dreamborn Inc. so you can import these decks over and try them out yourselves. Have fun gaming everyone. Peace out.